On the morning of October 7th, around 250 men, women, and children were kidnapped by Hamas from Israel into Gaza. That was 118 days ago. Since then, in rain or in shine, Israelis have gathered here at the Tel Aviv Museum in what has become known as Hostages Square. They have one goal, to keep attention focused on the 136 Israelis still being held captive in Gaza. I sit here and some people that I know are sitting in a tunnel in Gaza. Also, I'm 16, like my biggest problems should be boys and homework and like my finals and I don't even think about those things because there are more, more important things to, to care about right now. Tell me who's on your sweatshirt right now. Um, this is Tzachi Idan. Uh, this is his daughter, Mayan. She was murdered on October 7th. They were in the safe room. Yes. And the, the terrorists came and they shot the door. They asked them to open, but they didn't open, so they shot the door. Open the door! And Mayan was shot, killed on place. And uh, then they took, they made a live uh, on Facebook yeah. with all the family. They filmed them for hours sitting. You can see Sahi's hands are still with his daughter's hand, uh, blood on his hands. Um, and then they took their neighbors, uh, Omri's family. Uh, and they were all together for many, many hours, still broadcasting everything live. How does it feel for you guys to be here? We be with the people, I think, that just to say to them, go by them and say, we're here with you. We're just, we're, we're just there. We're, you're not alone in this communion. Uh, that's, that's how I feel. And, you know, see the faces and the stories. And it's real people and they're there right now. So We need the hostages back. We're, we're, a, we're a family here. These are our brothers and sisters. We know somebody that's a hostage. Um, she was a soldier in one of the bases. She was taken from the base. What's her name? Uh, Daniela. So Daniela was in a video that was released by Hamas yesterday. Yeah. Really heartbreaking. It's, it, it's relief, relieving to see she's still alive. But it's in, the, in the same sentence, it's heartbreaking to see. What do you think of this government? <laughs> um, I think they have to bring them home regardless of what their priorities are. It needs to be their first priority. It needs to be the number one priority. It's hard to imagine anything taking greater priority than returning these innocent people. But the Israeli government's twin goals of destroying Hamas and bringing the hostages home are considered by many Israelis and many observers to be at odds with each other. Do you think the government is doing everything right now? No, of course not. They are not. What do you think they should do? They should go for a deal, whatever it is. There's no price that's too high? Of course there's no price for people. Israel won't be the same if they don't get back. For Rachel Goldberg, whose 23-year-old son Hirsch was taken hostage on October 7th, the government's competing priorities have created a kind of catch-22 that she and all of the other hostage families are trapped in. From the beginning, it was clear that diminishing Hamas's military capacity to replicate October 7th again makes a lot of sense and has to be a goal. And I think we've seen 24-7 for many, 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 many weeks now, we've been going full throttle to try to attain that goal. And countries do have an obligation to its citizens to protect, it, protect them and keep them safe. The covenant of the government or your, whoever your government is, is going to protect your civilians. They failed, our, our system failed. Failures happen, but we have a time and a chance to atone for that and to fix that and to repent for that by getting these 136 people back. And I know that as a hostage family, we sort of have felt the energy being exerted on the, on the negotiating to get those human beings back is not as 24-7 as the other mission. We will never recover if we don't get these people back. If we say that we value life, then we have to value the lives of these people 
who have paid so dearly for 112 days. And it's very hard to picture what the hostages are going through. And frankly, it's really hard to picture what the thousands and thousands and thousands of Gazan civilians are going through. Rachel, one of the first people that we spoke to in the hours after October 7th was your husband, John. And at the time, you just knew that your son, Hirsch, had been taken into Gaza by Hamas. I'm speaking to you on day 112 since he was taken from you. And I just wanted you to reflect a little bit on those past 112 days. Well, it's, um, it's interesting that people often say, every day many people say, I can't imagine what you're going through. And I always say, I can't imagine what I'm going through. I always wake up with like a start and I have the sort of moment where I realize, oh no, uh, it's another day and he's still not home. And I say, uh, you know, there's a traditional prayer that some Jewish people say upon wakening that is thanking God for giving you back your soul to have another day. And I say, let today be the day. And then I say, before I get out of bed, now pretend to be a human. And I think all of us, all of the hostage families are processing and walking through this all the time mare at the same, in different ways. Meaning it's not a nightmare. It's an every second mare. It's not at night. It's not a day. It's every single second of our lives is trauma. You mentioned being someone that gets up in the morning and says the Modani prayer. How has your Judaism played a role in the past 112 days of your life? It's played an enormous role. I'm in a relationship with this idea of God. And for me, it's like any relationship. And sometimes in a relationship, you're saying, what are you doing? What are you thinking? What are you up to? I don't get it. Explain this to me. And so when I'm praying in the morning and there are certain pieces where I stop and I'll keep saying the line over and over again when it says like, you save and redeem, you save and redeem, you save and redeem. And my kids, kind of my girls, uh, I have two younger daughters, Hirsch is my oldest and my only son. Uh, they kind of imitate me saying like, Podel Matzil, Podel Matzil. And I'm, I'm like looking up and shaking my hands and saying, you know, it's time to show up and to save and redeem. Where are you? I know you're there. So what is going on? And I just pray and hope that I will be privileged to make sense of this time of my world being completely upside down and completely filled with angst. What are other things that you and the other families are urging people around the world to do right now? I think people have to try very hard to explain who is this cohort of hostages who are currently still being held. It's not a homogenous group. These are people who still represent almost 20 different nations. There are Christians, Jews, Muslims, Hindus, and Buddhists still being held. We know the youngest baby is one year old. The oldest person is 85. You know, every single person who is a hostage is an entire universe to their family. So we have 136 universes that are waiting for us to come and get them. And I think that we won't be able to look ourselves in the mirror as human beings if we fail. I really don't think we will recover. This is the right way to protest. What do you mean? 61-year-old Yair Golan is a retired Israeli general whose high-ranking career in the army came to a halt in 2016 because of his harsh criticism of the Israeli right. Despite continuous protesting of Bibi's government over the years, on the morning of October 7th, Golan put on his uniform and ran toward the south to save people. I bumped into him and his wife at Hostage Square. Together, they have five military-age sons. You know, a decent minister of defense would have been here this night 
talk to the people, say to the parents, say to the, the sons and the daughters of the hostages, we are with you. We are doing everything to free them. We are not separate. This is a national goal, not just the goal of the you know, thousands of people who gathered here this night. What we are talking about right now is the cohesiveness of the Israeli society. Whether we are able or not to stand for 136 people that we left them in the hands of Hamas. It's easy to have theoretical, abstract conversations about which war aim is more important. But when you are standing in Hostage Square, there is only one answer. Bring them home.